And so I'm going to tell a quick story. This is my, this is my amateur theory about amateur theory to address the question of the epidemic of stupidity. Uh, as background, two things. One, I was convinced by Adam Curtis's documentary uh, uh, way back when that we are in a nonlinear war, that basically information warfare is cheaper than bombs and bullets. And it turns out that Russia was really good at nonlinear warfare and appears to really suck at warfare on the ground as we're learning in Ukraine. But, but I, I was convinced a while ago uh, by hypernormalization is the name of the documentary that, that we're sort of in this battle. And um, I also believe that uh, separately that people, humans are really smart. Like people are really smart. And some people who uh, seem really dumb, it turns out when you ask them about baseball or quilting or something they really give a shit about, they have memorized everything. They know their stats. They, they, they like, you know, and, and, and people who are poor are really smart. Uh, most of us wouldn't last a couple of days in a favela or, or a slum someplace. Uh, we would die very, very quickly because there's so many things you have to do just to keep alive and stay alive and be safe in places where there's constant danger. And most of us live in little cocoon, uh, sort of bubble wrapped lives where there's very little actual danger present as long as sort of the, the cash keeps flowing through our system to keep all the barriers up. Um, but for me, like, I think that a lot of the stupidity we see is has been around a lot, but it's strategy. To, to me, uh, I have a another another piece of amateur thesis is that the the story of human history is a fight in the cockpit over the joystick of control over whatever country or entity you happen to live in and the the parties that make it into the cockpit which are very few because usually we have elites who are fighting over the joystick um, they each think they're going to lose they're about to lose they each think the other side is going to kill them off and knife them in the back uh, it is a desperate struggle, and the winners, in retrospect, always thought they were about to lose. Uh, and all you know, it's just nasty. And every now and then, they run the airplane into the ground and kind of wipe out their society. And bad things happen, uh, either because they made stupid decisions within the system and destroyed it, like you know, Mao and Stalin killed like twenty some million people individually through really stupid decisions. Just look at the four pest campaign in China where they basically starved, uh, you know, uh, possibly 10 million plus people because they eliminated all the sparrows, which had been eating all the insects. Um, so I think of our stupidity or our perceptions of stupidity as part strategy because stupid people who are fearful are easier to manipulate. And there's a whole bunch of political parties that have gotten really, really, really smart um, sociology, psychology, anthropology, group dynamics, and all that kind of stuff. And they're like, hey, if we can keep people scared and afraid, they will grab, they will seize any narrative that floats by. And we have lots of really great narratives that will make them even more afraid. Uh, and that's what's happening. So, so we are in this world where uh, then, then fold into this some new technologies that have shown up that lower the cost of communicating to zippity doo Basically, there's a, there's a fixed cost of getting online, which is a device of some sort and then a connection of some sort. And beyond that, everything else, the, the cost is your time. Information freely is superconducted around the world. And we, and worse, the platforms, uh, not email, but the, uh, the major platforms, uh, Facebook, et cetera, their business model is addiction and uh, stalking, basically data mining our stuff and invading our privacy. They want addiction. So the platforms are not designed to help moderate, modify, or change all of this. And they're designed to float like cute cats and uh, people's morning toast bread, uh, avocado toast and whatever else through, which makes us in some sense sort of stupider. And then uh, my whole quest started 35 years ago when I realized I hated the word consumer because our world has been consumerized. And when we're treated as mere consumers instead of as citizens, we lose that sense of standards and rules and order. We lose that sense, more importantly, of interdependence. And uh, so this notion that we are in this little sucker together and that we need to sort of figure out how to, how to make the world better together or we're all screwed because this thing doesn't naturally drive itself. Uh, we actually need to steer together rather than be fighting in the cockpit over the joystick. And, and, and I hate that I revert, revert so often to the fight over the joystick metaphor, but I do because I just see it happening so often all the time. And I see actively the things that are happening on the street as strategy. 
And, and, you know, Steve Bannon to me is a brilliant strategist and, a, you know, he's like pretty much on my evil spectrum on my naughty list, but, but he is really, really, he's one of those people who's figured out a lot of these social dynamics and is busy coaching leaders around the world on how to use them. And it's working so well that in country after country, we are evenly split, you know, and, and, and a piece of this is what legislation do you create that'll, that'll buy you a victory, even if your stances are unpopular. And so Citizens United basically says money doesn't matter in politics. So hey, guess what? We, we're just going to pour insane amounts of money into politics and that's going to help us win. And it does. So all these things happen because the ground rules that we've set are, are too easy to corrupt. And because we've lost touch with each other and can't figure out uh, that we're together. Uh, one of the tools here is what I call denial of discourse attacks, which is, hey, I know that, you know, Ken, when you say we would like to, like, people deserve a place that the way to keep people from their place at the table and to keep winning the battle is to deny them the ability to talk, to, to do denial of discourse, and to make the arena for discourse so messy or painful or, or irritating or dangerous that nobody will dare tread into it, which means that when Lindsey Graham is incensed that somebody would 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 say something against Brett Kavanaugh and impugn his character, when when Lindsey Graham looks like he's about to explode, that is theater. That is pure and intentional theater to win a seat on the Supreme Court for a guy who very likely was a sex abuser as a young guy. He was certainly a drunken bro, uh, et cetera, et cetera. But that's just a that's just a little scene in the theater of this strategic battle that's playing out at very high levels all over the place, all around us. Um, and my answer to all of this is we need to figure out how to trust each other again. That's why the unfinished 2020 talk that I gave is called uh, Trust is the Only Way Forward. I say some of this there. I'll post the link to that talk here. And I think that everything I just said is a fabulous ex example of scope creep uh, because uh, I'm sort of saying that, that the question we're looking at involves all these large scale um, social and political and economic dynamics in the world. Um, so that's my amateur theory of, of uh, why we're facing an epidemic of stupidity. I don't know that, I think that it's perceptual, it's temporary, but it's intentionally driven. It's like there's a bunch of people who are feeding us bread and circuses because being fearful and stupid makes you really, really pliable.